assalamu alaikum students the topic of uh, today's lecture is uh, a novel that is written by babsi sidwa and the title of the novel is ice candy man and uh, this novel is retitled as cracking india students this is an amazing novel and uh, it can be read through different aspects but here i'll discuss it through post colonial aspect so let's start it okay i'll start uh, this lecture with the introduction of babsi sidwa babsi sidwa as you know is pakistani american writer and she is considered as most influential female writer born in karachi in 1936 and uh, uh, she was a uh, brought up and educated in lahore by the way and uh, she belongs to a parsi community she has a gujarati parsi descent and she belongs to a parsi community named as zoroastrian zoroastrians are basically uh, it is considered as the oldest practiced religion on dualistic cosmology of good and evil and zoroastrians are basically the distinctive minority who left iran for south asia to avoid religious persecution babsi sidwa is a strong woman uh, being a polio victim at the age of 2 she never compromised on her education she educated at home by an anglo indian lady and uh, and she was graduated from kenned college lahore as far as her matrimonial relationship is considered her first marriage was unsuccessful and uh, she was divorced but in uh, her interview uh, she she describe herself as punjabi parsi pakistani and she is proud to be a punjabi pakistani punjabi parsi pakistani and uh, uh, she started her writing in 1970s and got inspiration from the story of young girl who ran away from the home and was killed by her husband so uh, this is the story outline her of her later produced um, novel the bride and uh, you see uh, she uh, she touched uh, very sensitive topics um and she started her, even her own career with a new approach with a fresh approach and uh, she wrote what she felt on her pulse she touched very sensitive topics um, that are related with women oppression and uh, suppression in patriarchal uh, setup so i consider babsi sidwa an amazing novelist and an amazing writer in in uh, in world literature she has made her place in in the world literature here i want to share some of sidwa's credentials her honors and uh, uh, babsi sidwa we see her as an active social worker and she has been the part of delegation to iran and turkey 1970 and after that in 1985 she has been awarded um, with patras bukhari award and that is uh, that award is given on her debut novel the bride and after that in 1991 she has been awarded by sitare imtiyaz which is the highest third highest uh, uh, civilian third highest honor and civilian award in state of pakistan and uh, uh, she is best known for her collaborative work with indo canadian film maker deepa mehta deepa mehta um, is basically the film director and uh, screen writer as we know her uh, she is the best known for her elements trilogy the fire earth and water and uh, sidwa wrote uh, both in 1991 novel ice candy man which served as the basis of mehta's uh, film 
uh, earth that is produced in 1998 as well as uh, her uh, her novel uh, water that is uh, produced in 2006 so a novel which is based on mehta's film water so earth and water these two uh, films are based on uh, uh, on the collaborative work with uh, babsi sidwa so they the both are famous for their collaborative work and uh, uh, i have shared uh, with you the link of a film earth that is pictureized on our uh, novel ice candy man and uh, along with all these awards and credentials now uh, a documentary about sidwa's life like pepsi silence of my life is currently in production and is expected to release in 2021 so this is all about sidwa's credentials and her honors here i want to share uh, some of the major works of sidwa and uh, she herself says that her first language is gujarati and her second language is urdu and her third language is english so she can read and write best in english but she is more comfortable talking in gujarati or urdu and often uh, uh, translates literary form uh, gujarati or urdu to english as well so uh, her work the language of love that is published by readings lahore in 2013 and uh, her next work is jangal wala sahib that is the urdu translation and that is also published by the readings lahore in 2012 pakistan the next work is city of sin and splendor and uh, that is also the writings on lahore in 2006 and the next work is water a novel that is uh, the collaborative work as we have discussed in a previous slide with deepa mehta in 2006 and then babsi sidwa omnibus uh, is released in 2001 and her next novel is an american barat that is also very famous novel and but that is published in 1993 the next one is cracking india and or the ice candy man now uh, you are familiar with the title that cracking india and both uh, ice candy man both are the same so uh, after that uh, her novel the bride that is produced in 1982 uh, in england in 1983 84 in india and uh, uh, this uh, this is also the title of the pakistani uh, bride uh, in 1990 and then the crow eater the crow eaters is produced in 1978 in pakistan and in 1979 and uh, 81 in india and uh, in 1980 in england as well so this is all about the major works of sidwa in this slide uh, i'm going to discuss the story line of ice candy man or the trekking india so here is the plot of this novel that um leeni is an 8 year old parsi girl who leads a comfortable life with the four members of her family before the partition of india in lahore leeni regularly goes for walk with her hindu aya shanta and here sidwa introduces the readers Uh, to the characters like Shanta the Aya and uh, Imam Din the cook and uh, the ice candy man Dil Nawaz and Hasan Ali his cousin brother at the moment people uh, is undivided and india are seen engaged in quit india movement and on the other hand the muslim league uh, motivates the muslim community to raise a demand for the separate nation for the muslims often the slogan uh, of pakistan zindabad and uh, um, 
uh, and their own slogans are heard in their streets but the communal harmony is intact one day riots break out in lahore and in a uh, locality far away from lini's house uh, this lead to killing of the innocent people on both sides like indians are killing muslims and muslims are killing indians so the news of bloodshed spreads like wild fire the all india radio also reported about the cases of violence from different parts of the india so the entire punjab province is seen burning in the fire of hatred and communal violence dilnawaz the ice candy man waits for his sister on lahore railway station when the train arrives from gurdaspur everyone on the platform is shocked to see the ghastly sight the train is loaded with mutilated bodies of muslim passengers this shocks everyone and the friendly dilnawaz turns into a person possessed with a frenzy and a desire to kill the hindus he also abducted his friend shanta he also abducted raped his lover uh, shanta the eye of the lini and later takes her to the low market of lahore a locality of bad women like the hira mandi so ice candy man loved shanta from the core of his heart but now she is a hindu for him and the the feeling of love is replaced with the feeling of uh, hatred now vengeance has transformed him into a killer and beast later with the bulk of lini uh, the aya or the relative shanta is reduced and she reaches the relief camp at amritsar so in the end the ice candy man also follows her there so this is the story and uh, now uh, i'll discuss some of the post colonial aspect of this novel in this slide i'm going to discuss the title of the novel ice candy man uh, that is retitled for its contradictory and conflicting ideas and reproduced with title of cracking india because of sidwa dual literary heritage as in usa america and in pakistan sidwa justifies that ice candy man that title is contradictory in america because ice and candy is a euphemism a substitute for drugs so he changed the title representing the theme of partition as cracking india although she says that that the new title is suggestive but the the title the topic like cracking india it diminishes the centrality the significance of ice candy man and also it blurs the symbolic role of ice candy man sidwa says that the title uh, ice candy man it symbolizes the evil in the leaders and in the people who were responsible for the unmitigated suffering of the common people so ice candy man it represent it reveals the contradiction of situation and conflicts of human being for example ice candy man a person who is as sweet as candy before partition there exist communal harmony among the people like the happy marriages of hindu and muslim 
and people have unity although they have different religion different norms different custom like lini like her aya like the gardener like the mezu and even the ice candy man who is a muslim they all are friends and even admirers of shanta devi who is hindu so in their love affair in their in their uh, social and uh, in their societal norms in their values there is no difference of caste there is no difference of religion they all are one but this sweet candy like situation changes with the announcement of partition it breaks the sweetness and ice portion visible when all have cold behavior towards other and that violence that brutality reveals how fake how temporary their sweetness is so ice candy man also reveals a person that is outward a sweet person outwardly but inwardly he is as cold as ice in this slide i'm going to discuss post colonial perspective of this novel ice candy man the first one is unhomeliness unhomeliness is a term that is defined by homi ke bhaba uh, that term is also used by sigmund freud but uh, as we are studying here post colonial uh, analysis of this novel so uh, i am focusing on the description of homi ke bhaba uh, he has described unhomeliness in his book the location of culture and he described uh, unhomeliness as a feeling as if a person is not at home this feeling this condition he feels uh, in migration in dislocation unhomed places uh, if a person is banished or moved here in this novel migration or dislocation or unhomed all these factors are the significant uh, perspective having the significant perspective in this novel like unhomeliness as it means the character are unhomed they are dislocated firstly the things we notice is about the character of shanta bai the aya of lini who lives with lini in her house this is not her home she has many lovers but ice candy man named dil nawaz is selected to marry before partition hindu muslim marriages are the good examples of their unity of their love but after part partition it becomes worse shanta bai belongs to amritsar but she used to live with lini uh, in lahore and after after partition um she was like banished or moved uh, to to a place that is called uh, diamond market and and in the end she moved to amritsar secondly uh, the example of unhomeliness is uh, through the villagers of p pandu who negated the idea of going uh, of migrating uh, by saying that uh, they say that where can the muslim villagers go how can they abandon their ancestors graves every inch of land they own they other can so 
so uh, here the idea of migration the idea of dislocation is also revealed that they do not want to leave uh, their place their inhabitants uh, their native land so they simply negate that idea by saying that uh, they will not leave this land and it is not possible uh, for them or for anyone to to unhome uh, them out to unhome them from that place and thirdly it is very obvious that in this novel ice candy man uh, we can uh, see that unhomeliness brings the destruction unhomeliness brings the massacre the violence the brutality during partition sidwa projects unhomed people and their tragedy uh, in this novel she presents the train massacre as most horrible association of the partition of india for dwellers in punjab ice candy man uh named uh, a person dil nawaz who is expecting relatives from gurdaspur instead receive receiving them uh, receiving uh, their uh, sorry receiving his relatives he receives the humiliated dead bodies and so the idea of migration the idea of unhomeliness brings a very destructive uh, element in ice candy man in this side i'm going to discuss an other post colonial perspective that is identity crisis um, what is identity identity is basically a fact of being who or what we are our name our personality and other specifications like our country culture religion and many more things that reveals anything about us so identity crisis in post colonial perspective it is a period of uncertainty and confusion in which a person sense of identity becomes insecure typically due to change in their expected aims or role in the society so in this novel ice candy man sidwa celebrates by delineating that atmosphere of love and laughter before partition but sidwa also reveals that how that love and laughter converted into dark and gloomy communal violence during that partition so here we can say that their identity became the reason of their hostility that their difference in their identities make them enemies the main example of identity crisis during that partition is that before partition a muslim person ice candy man who is the admirer of shanta bai become the most cruel and violent person towards a lady whom he loved the most he becomes her enemy because he is a muslim and that lady that woman is hindu so that partition period is full of uncertainty and confusion in which that 
all the characters lose their identity or their identity becomes insecure hybridity is the significant is one of the significant term in post colonial perspective to define hybridity as it is mentioned that hybridity is basically an in between or interstitial space that gives birth to new signs of identity through a negotiation of difference let's see an example to understand hybridity when a person when a south asian person is living in abroad in uk he is uh, living there having different social circle than a person who is living in pakistan so the person living in uk has the different social circle have different uh, aims goals while he is practicing his own religious values there but as far as his professional life is concerned he is adopting what leads him to progress and achievement so that person is hybrid with two cultures with two traditions with with different norms and values and to clear hybridity uh, there is an other example of we pakistani people as we adopt the fashion of hollywood and bollywood in a style that keeps us in the limits of islam for example girls used to wear versatile abayas wear jeans but cover their heads with scarf so in this way we are also hybrid with two or more cultures with two or more traditions same is the case with sidwas ice candy man here in this novel you can observe the difference of identities you can feel the difference in their culture in their religion but they are living together practicing own religion but their social and political life is merged they are adopting each other's culture but religion is one of the fundamental uh, aspect of your identity like your name your country your culture religion is very much significant and special for a person religion is uh, maybe the one thing that could not be hybrid that is why according to sidwa that people of different religion are made hostile to each other and hostility creates a crisis of identity among these communities that hostility is based on uh, the uh, religious point of view as we have dis uh, discussed earlier that sidwa also belong to a parsi community but she loves pakistan she loves to live in pakistan and she is proud of being a punjabi parsi so uh, apart from these uh, examples that are mentioned on the slide you can also observe many other examples in this novel ice candy man here i am going to discuss a very important very significant aspect of post colonial studies that is feminism i am going to discuss uh, feminism in two two uh, part that is two sides of the same coin like colonial feminism and post colonial post colonial feminism to understand what is feminism uh, feminism is basically 
a movement that has played a very vital role in projecting the suppressed status of women in the patriarchal society in this domain in this movement actually the patriarchal culture is represented where women is social construct a site on which masculine meanings get spoken and masculine desires enacted and the agenda of feminism is that it concerns the oppression of women and also uh, it also concerns with discrimination the inequality of women the oppression and the stereotype uh, uh, the stereotype way of presenting women in uh, patriarchal culture and last but not least the uh, the basic agenda is about the objectification of women as we have observed in in the novel that uh, that that aya is a symbol of sensuousness and beauty and she has many admirers in the novel so women uh, in colonial aspect uh, deals or bears the uh, the burden of men's power lust and revenge but uh, what i feel is that the status of women and uh, what she feels what what she wants remains the same after post colonial feminism in post colonial um, aspect the the status of women becomes more less that is why uh, the first point in post colonial feminism i have written is the fallen woman she is fallen uh, in the in in her status she is fallen in her in every aspect of life so this novel i scandy man here babsi sidwa has very realistically illustrated women's plight and exploitation in the patriarchal society in the patriarchal culture where men establish their masculine power and hence fulfill their desires by brutality assaulting women here we also observe that men uh, act as an aggressor and and their uh, their uh, dealing or their behavior with women is as if they are the the achievers the victors but on the other hand women endure the pain and the humiliation of barbarity enacted upon them and the example of that brutality that violence that barbaric attitude towards women is when uh, the the admirer the lover of uh, shanta becomes uh, becomes uh, her husband uh, while becoming her husband he pushes her into the business of prostitution so uh, a woman that who is already colonized who is already under the clutches of men becomes more inferior more worthless and dehumanized agency is an other important and other significant aspect of post colonial uh, studies and uh, agency means to resist to struggle and to make decision and uh, it is a capacity to live or act in a defined world means if we resist uh, in particular situation if uh, we uh, take a stand in particular situation it means that we have agency and we have capacity to live to stand uh, and to resist uh, to that particular situation to particular 
environment. This is basically uh, we defined agency in term of resistance, in term of rebelliousness, in term of making decision. And uh, in this particular novel, Ice Candy Man, novel ends with positive note that women strive to come out of their plight and finally move forward from their degraded and tormented state to their new life, to their new hopes. So agency is something that gives us strength to think, to fight and it is a sort of passion which, which is defined in term of resistance to make decision. So agency is very important aspect in post-colonial studies. The very simple example of agency is that in Heart of Darkness, the African people do not have any agency, any resistance when uh, white people were colonizing them. But in uh, Things Fall Apart, when a Congo is a person who shows some agency against that white people. He is a person who is not accepting um, their rules, their religion, their education um, very wholeheartedly. So agency means that if a person has some sort of resistance, has some sort of struggle in making his own rule, making his own decision, that is agency. But like in Heart of Darkness, there is no resistance, there is no nothing uh, which we call like agency in heart of darkness. No resistance, no decisions, nothing like that. I hope uh, the term is clear to you.